I'm going to be taking three samples of steel that have been cut, pre-cut for a stress fracture. I'm going to put them into this forge that I have constructed based on the King of Random's uh, design using plaster of Paris and play sand. Um, link in the description for the instructions and videos on how to do that. Um, just uh, learn from my mistakes and make sure you drill the hole for your burner at the right uh, size. What's going to happen is we're going to take these three samples, we're going to put them inside that forge, we are going to heat them up past the um, austenitic eutectic line, they'll become um, non-magnetic at that point, and the inner structure of the metal should change and al allow it to a point where it's all the atoms are kind of fluid moving around a little bit. Well, not fluid, you know, there's a little bit of a difference there. What will happen then is I will take one sample and normal and just normally just take it out and let it cool on its own and it should go down into the perlite phase if you look at the program, which I will show later. Second piece, I am going to take that and quench it immediately after I, after I pull it out of the out of the forge and that should change its structure to become really brittle. Um, it is going to go right into the Martin, martensitic phase and this I'm going to actually go into the Mar martensitic phase the same way that I did with this and just quenching it in, in some ice water but I'm going to take it into the kitchen and heat it in the oven for around an hour at 400 or 500 degrees and it's going to change the uh, that to a tempered martensite. Wish me luck. number one. I decided to go ahead and do some, a bending test to kind of see what it does. Just kind of hit it at least twice with a hammer. So, Alright, here we go. Alright, never mind. That's not going to do anything. Okay. Alright, now we're going to actually break the samples. Um, I'm going to put them in the vise and that little cut that I made before is going to help it fracture. Uh, if that doesn't work, we'll just take a bar and try to bend it. Uh, hope it doesn't come to that point. I'll have to get a closer up later with my cell phone. But yeah, the, the structure has definitely changed very cloudy, very small, small grains. Okay, that was sample number one. On to sample number two.
You know what? I think I actually mixed it up. Uh, number two is the one that we just uh, let cool, you know, in ambient air. I think number number one was actually the one that we quenched and just stayed quenched and didn't do anything with. So I mixed those two up. But that's science, right? Bent and the grain structure is a little bit more shiny, not so cloudy. You can still see a bit of the grain structure inside there. Now this one I do know for certain is the last one, uh, sample number three, that we um, took and quenched in ice water and then tempering heat treatment in the oven. This one's a little bit more dangerous. Okay. Oh, it looks very similar, so it's much more of a clean break. Now, I would have done a test to bend these, but I don't have a access in, to a sledgehammer uh, in this shop, or at least I don't know where one is. I'm just pressed for time. Okay. And here's a closer look at the samples. So what we have here, this is the sample that was tempered after being quenched. You can see there's a little bit more detail on how that these structures look. Compared to the one that was just quenched and this one, they look very similar in their grain structure, but it, it, the camera doesn't really do it justice. There's, there's quite a bit more, um, a little, little tiny little shiny bits in here, and this is a lot more cloudy in that uh, region there. Over here, we can obviously see that there is this plastic deformation here for the uh, well that was just let to cool with ambient air temperature. Um, and there is the grain structure. Looks pretty cool. All right, so now that all that is done, now we can talk about this TTT diagram. On the bottom, we have the time in seconds. And this is a logarithmic scale, so you know it's just not like one second, two second, three second. It's like one second, one minute, one hour, one day. Now, on this side we have the temperatures here. When we started at, we're probably around here somewhere. We got really, really hot. Um, so this is where the first part of our process is. For the first sample above the eutectic line here, the austenitic phase. And we just took it out and let it cool down. So that one just kind of did that. You know, probably might have been a little bit of a curve, but, you know, I'm just going to put a line there for now. And that was the first sample, number one. Use my handwriting. I'm an engineer, not an artist. The second um, sample, same temperature as everything else, but we immediately put it in ice water. So it was a very rapid cooling phase, and it went right into the martensitic region here now the third one same path exactly the same path initially then we go right back up to about 450 degrees uh well actually this is in the celsius range so this is more over here but uh now the third sample we did the same thing we quenched it in the ice water went down there and then we took that, and actually probably not at zero, more like probably about here. Anyway, we then uh, took that second sample, brought it down, and then we brought it back up to around 232, somewhere in here, degrees Celsius. That's uh, Fahrenheit is the 450 degrees. And we just kind of kept it in there for about an hour. And this was our tempered martin site. All right, and there you have it, boys and girls. We have our eutectic transformations of standard carbon steel with a heat treatment in many different ways with a homemade forge. All right, that's it. You guys all have a good day. Keep your stick on the ice.